They made Florp, not Foss. I am on life uh. support. Okay. <laughs> Curious so, for Jonah's thoughts here too. So I saw I'm this. I'm sure you're just gonna say I, <laughs> you're I read, validated. <laughs> I read into it. I saw what happened. From what I saw, this was a few weeks ago. So, Florp is a browser people have been talking about as a hardened Firefox that's apparently different than the other ones that exist. And people are like, "What are your thoughts on it?" And I go, "Well, it's early to tell. I haven't seen what's super compelling about it yet, and like we're always patient about recommending things back here. And we just like to see things pan out a little bit before we formally recommend it." We made that into a clip, and it got like a bit of hate of people like, "You guys are not like accepting like cool new things." And it's like, "We're not even saying it can't exist. We just want to wait and see." We have like thousands of viewers who like rely on us for good advice. We can't just say like, "Check out this new thing. It's awesome." And then screw them over. That's just not going to work. And yeah, so I checked this out. So there was a Reddit thread of the developer of I, I believe to be the developer of Florp. It's not like I can verify that cuz I don't think it's on the like, it's just hard to, like, verify things with Florp. And they were just like, oh, someone's, like, forked our browser, and we have to change our license. And so they made it closed source, at least temporarily, until they figure out a new license for the project. And, like, this is the kind of stuff that, like, like can you imagine if we recommended Florp, put out a video about it, said it was awesome, and it got 20, 30,000 views. 20, 30,000 people. Let's say, like, half of those people just downloaded it. And then it turns closed source, and now we don't even know what's going on with the project until it gets better. And I know there's nuance. I know they're trying to figure it out. I know they're trying to make it open source again. And I'm not even saying it can't, like, still do super well um, and still, like, make a comeback and gain people's trust back. But this is why we don't do this. And I don't know how many times it's going to take for us to, like, be patient for people to understand why we do this. Skiff, this, how many more times? That's my, that's my little rant. Yeah, that that's crazy. I hadn't actually heard about this until just now, so I'm glad yeah, that well, you I sent knew it, all I the backstory. Sent it in the TechLore <laughs> chat, like the whole Reddit thread, and you must have not seen it, but the TechLore chat. Miss, I don't remember seeing that. That's crazy, though. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's it's exactly like Lucky Two Two Five just said in the live chat here. Someone did what our license allows. Time to change the license. That's <laughs> that's a crazy <laughs> mindset to me <laughs> that a developer would have. Like. They chose the license in the first place. I don't really understand why someone forking your project would necessitate all of this hoopla in the first place. Just to clear it up, just to clear it up, I'm relaying what I quickly read three weeks ago. So I don't have the exact details of this. So I encourage everyone to look into it themselves because Henry's version in his head might be different than reality. <laughs> Not significantly. Okay. But like the small details, like what was the license, what's the new license, might be something to look into. Just to so, just, just to cover my bases here. But it is I'll really check that bizarre. Out. But, yeah, it sounds like a strange situation. And yeah, I mean, you just hit the nail on the head. It's why you can't recommend brand new projects like that that come out of nowhere with n nothing to back them up, really. You got to wait for these projects to mature, I think, before you can really like assess whether they're going to be super valuable additions to people's privacy tool chains. I feel like there's a big subset of people who really like to be early adopters in the in the like techie community in general. And um, there's probably some overlap with that group of people and like people who want privacy tools. But I think by and large, most people who want or need privacy tools need tools that actually work. And so when you're trying to cater to that group of people and make content for them that's actually like valuable and educational it's it's very important that you get things right and you're not rushing into things even though like something new and shiny just came out that looks super cool i agree and i think i get excited too like i get really excited about these new shiny things and yeah um i just i'm reading on reddit a little bit right now and you know there's some back and forth someone's saying florp isn't going closed source and the nuance here is that like the previous license, so I'm finally looking into this again, the previous license didn't require attribution and the developer doesn't want people to just take it and not attribute back to floor. And so they made it temporarily closed source in some way, shape or form so that they can re-release mm -hmm. it under a new license. Which What was the previous I, license? Do we know? 
Now I want to look. I I can't even think of a single license that doesn't require attribution. So that <laughs> I also don't know how this wasn't something that could have been resolved in a week, if, or if not less. Like a license change doesn't need to take this long. It depends how many outside contr contributors they have, because if they have other people who own copyright to some dev. parts of the code, you can't. If yeah, if you made every single commit, then it's just as easy as choosing a new license. According to these threads, it's a solo dev. Even the people defending Florp are saying it's a solo dev just trying to protect their work. Work. Yeah. Well, I just don't know if like if they've accepted pull requests, for example, from mm, other people. Um, got it. There's potential copyright issues there, so it can take a while in some cases. I do know that for sure, but I don't know what the specific situation here is. Either way, like I really wish them luck. I I do really want more browsers. It's just like us needing to recommend tools, especially ones that are like very, 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 I guess, sensitive. Like a browser can do it can track everything you do like we need to be very careful recommending what browsers we we push to people so um yeah i i also am someone who likes to tinker and test and a lot of these tools that you guys talk about i do test but i'm not gonna go on tech and recommend them as tools quite yet um so yeah those we also are get, totally like, different things <laughs> yeah and also sorry not to go back to this regarding the florp thing i'm seeing a lot of people like laughing about it like oh imagine like using florp with a straight face and like, yeah, I mean, I think it's easy to do that. But like people use this. It's a concern. It's a common thing. So it, it's a serious thing, too. Like we need to be like be sure we're treating this seriously because some people are using Florp and it's not like it's untrusted, but it's important to be more educational about how we like approach this. So rather than being like, LOL, you use Florp. That's silly. You screwed up. You picked the wrong tool. That could be you when you pick the next wrong tool. You know, I've picked wrong tools that got removed as well. And so, um, yeah. Oh, and they're saying just Florp yeah. is funny. They're saying the name is funny. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah, I it is a bit. going to your friend. <laughs> hey, what's, what's the browser of choice? Chrome, Brave, Edge, <laughs> Florp. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's funny, but yeah, just just a reminder for us to be more educational about how we how we uh, handle mistakes that people make because that could be us someday too. Yeah, us being you. If that makes sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, thanks for watching this clip. Here's another clip for you. And if you want to really dive into tech, check out our main channel, TechLore, for a deeper dive into digital rights, privacy, security, and more. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you soon.